Record on this computer. Hmm. Oh, hey, it does tell me you're recording. Oh, hey. Oh, yeah, we're live, I think. I hope we're not actually live. I think we are. It says recording. Like okay. you're not live streaming it somewhere. No! <laughs> okay. This is not getting cut out. You know that, right? I know. That's what I said. You want to record it on the cloud or live? <laughs> oh. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good, you? I'm good. So. Work on this intro thing. Huh? We need to work on this intro thing. Well, we could. I could splice it out. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So, hello, people, knitters, fiber friends. We're back. Yo ho ho. <laughs> no. So you may recognize us, possibly. Well, maybe with less gray, but hey. So welcome to the Distant Stitches podcast. And this was thought of Monday. Yep. <laughs> Monday, let's do this. So I'm Sue, also known as Crafting Your 7 on Ravelry and Instagram. And I'm Liz, also known as Jaded Knitter, pretty much everywhere. Oh, everywhere on the interwebs. No, there are a couple of places that I'm actually known as Lizzie Knits, but they are few oh, in between. Even I don't know that. Yeah, I don't think there's much. So do you want to say for those who might be confused seeing your face and hearing the name Liz? No, they can figure it out on their own. Good. All right. So shall we just jump into foes? Might as well. Because you're wearing one. Yes, I am. Go for it. Um, so this is the Scarfest, which is not showing up the best because it's storming out and my lighting is horrible. Um, but it's a wrap vest from Redone by a Pattern from the 1910s, it's World War One-ish. Why don't you try and stand up? Maybe you will be able to see it. No? Yeah? Not happening? No, it ends up with a really nice shot of a part of my body that doesn't <laughs> be on camera. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what's it knit out of? Um, or who's it by? Who's it by? It is it is actually called Scarf Fest, and it's by Judith. Have Dowd fun with that one. Rodnicki. Rodnicki. Sorry. <laughs> um, and it's out of the book Centenary Stitches. Um, I have no idea what the yarn is. It's reclaimed. In, no, it's reclaimed. It it's wool. It's it works. Brown. Cool. It probably came from wool time, which is a store in Ottawa. Yes, I'm in Gatineau, Quebec, where I have, was. As well, maybe we should mention that for those of you who don't know, we used to have a podcast together. We did <laughs> two tangled skeins uh, for five years. Something for like five that. years, yeah. So Liz moved away for work, and well, life happens, and we're back together. And I didn't think it would be right to do it under the same name because it's no. Just, and you live in southern Ontario. Yep, southwestern Ontario. I am seven hours away from Sue. I'm north of Kitchener Waterloo, in a tiny yeah. little town full of Mennonites, which is awesome. Yes. Yeah. So that's why I, like I came up the fabric my... stores around here. Distant stitches. Oh, yeah. fabric stores from them. Yeah. Gimme, gimme. <laughs> so that was knit on three and a half, right? Probably. No, oh, that's what we're going with. Three and a half millimeter. US four. Okay. So I will show one that I have not even worn. I test knit this for um show notes. There there's twin stitches design out of some le lems. Louet Gems Professional in Sport in the Willow colorway, but this is coming out way greener. I'm not a minty person. This is celery. It's called Willow, but it's more of a celery color. So this. Oh, I do love that top part. I no, love it. There you go. Yes. Mendrist. 
Because it hit 40 alcohol. Celsius here today. <laughs> and this room is the one that is hot and, yeah, hot. So it has... I hot. love the sleeves because you think, oh, God, there's no sleeve. But it, lit it does. It actually covers my shoulder quite well. And then it's just got a ribbed bottom. Now, is that pattern out yet? Because you yep. did that as a test net. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, yep. So, again, it's... um. Twin stitch did not design, talk, I can do that. Twin stitch design and it's Julianne Knitter on Instagram. And it's the second pattern I've tested for her. I did a baby sweater a little while ago for my daughter's BFF's little girl. That's so cute. So baby that. Baby clothes always are. Huh? Baby clothes always are. I know, and I was like, oh my God, it's gonna be too small. I blocked the mm out of it and it's actually too big for her. Like, okay. Yes, but too big is fine on a child because they'll grow into it. It's a tunic on a three-year-old. It's awesome. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. She'll be wearing it until she's eight. Yeah. So you have another, you have a few. I have oh, a yeah. few. I have one more, but I don't have it with me, so we'll forget about that because it's downstairs. Okay. So it's the full. Well, in which case, I'll do one more and then we can move on because I have a lot and... I can spread these out and I'm kind of going to have to because otherwise I'm going to run out of things to, to show. So this is the other one. This is if we had recorded on Tuesday and, you know, both of us hadn't had migraines, uh, <laughs> this would have been a work in progress, but I finished it. It is um, the Changing Staircases by Tristan Molina. And it is... A skein of Arctic Circle yarns. Arctic and crafts. Arctic, Arctic crafts. Crafts. And that's what I have written here, too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, Bente. I will get it eventually, I promise. Hashtag sorry, not sorry. Um, it's one, her one of the one-of-a-kind colorways. And, yes, it has a lot more green in it than you thought it did. Because Sue sent me this one because... I didn't have one and she was being nice and sent like, it to you me. You need some Arctic crafts. She yeah. balled it up and I'm like, crap. Yeah, there's a lot more green in this than she thought there was. That's okay. I've got lots of her yarn, just let's just say. She's my BFF in Norway and I see the yarn before anybody else does, so mine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have a couple of skeins in my basket. Basically her one of a kinds, so it's Arctic crafts by Bente. Her one of a kinds, she calls them chaotic good or chaotic evil. So she's taking what's left in the dye bath and who knows what you're going to get. Yep. Oh. But mm. I love that. Give me a shawl, thanks. No. You needed, you needed some squishiness. You need some squishies. Mm -hmm. So I have a whip. So I started this thing called Tunisian. Oh my lord, that's really that's gray. No, on. it's blue. Yeah, yeah, no, it's gray. Where's my ball? Like literally. Oh no, it's lighting will be yes. So that's gray, and this is like a burgundy because I don't like purple or blue. I was gonna say <laughs> or purple's blue. my color. Yeah. So, oh, it rolls. That's the one thing about Tunisian crochet. It rolls. But do you notice what it looks like? Yeah, that's... It's the knit stitch in Tunisian crochet. It's kind of awesome and easy, but oh man, thick. I did a, a, a slouchy for Sean and like that thing, he's going to go, he can go through battle with that thing. It's so thick. So, so yeah. perfect for Canadian winters. Yep. Yeah, and this is just a basic, it's going to be a V shawl, and I, who did I learn it from? I saw a video, and I followed on Instagram, and of course I can't remember her name. But yeah, so, and you have to go up, like this is sport. Yeah, this is sport, but I'm, I'm doing it on a six millimeter. Because if you don't, it's going to be like chain mail. Like chain, that stuff they wear, you know? 
So I am liking it the first little bit. Oh man, did I have a sore hand? Because you know, you got to hold the finger. And I tried all different ways of trying to hold it with the other hand and that, well, that was a hot mess. But yeah. I've actually never done Tunisian crochet, so I have no idea. It's easier than you think and it's fast. Yeah. And I have that in one of my bags from the Cozy Up Knits. Ooh. Their mother makes bags. So what you working on? Um, give me like three stitches. One. <laughs> Two. No, no, that was only one because it was a knit front and back. Oh, well. <laughs> yes, this is usually how it ends up. Um, so this is my current work in progress, which I started Wednesday, I think. Which one is it? Is it Hokey? No. Is that the Hokey? Yes. Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. So that's it so oh. far. I didn't realize it's short rows. I love that. Cause the, oh, okay. I was like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Hmm. No, no, no. That's a good thing. So that's the, how do you say the name? Um, I thought it was Juji. Mm -hmm. That was how I was pronouncing it. J-U-J-U-I. U-Y. I, I was going with Juji, but. Could be the H instead. Could be the H, could be Y. Yeah, I'm not entirely sh well. If you know how to pronounce the J U J U Y, let us know. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it is one of the knits by Joji Lacatelli. Mm -hmm. so I'm guessing the word is probably Italian. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Well, I think it's Hohi Locatelli. Mm. So. Who knows how to pronounce that? We're just going to leave it at Juji. <laughs> We're just going to leave it at um, We're really not sure. bad pronouncing words. And I will massacre anybody's name. Anybody. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're talking to the woman who has actually said John wrong. To someone's face. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this is out of, um, it's a three color. Of course, mine's not really showing up the colors right either. That looks, I don't know, it looks really purple. Purple with little pinks in it? Oh yeah, this one is, uh, okay. the bright pink is not as bright as it looks. That's it the light. Showing up, it's showing up purple, not blue. Yeah, it is purple. Huh. It's purple and pinks with a little bit of blue. Okay. And then this one is actually predominantly green with a little bit of gold and purple. And then this color is actually in this skein as well. There are three matched ones, which I had bought for another project years ago. Um, I got them at Shall We Knit here in Kitchener. At least I'm fairly certain that's where I got them. It might have been the store in Guelph. It was a while ago. Um, it's stash. And again, as you can tell by the wonderful wine job on that, or lack thereof, it was reclaimed from something else. Something else. I'm fairly certain it's um, Mad Tosh, Tosh Marina Light. Okay. It's single ply and it's definitely Merino. Probably. So that is the most likely candidate. I can't find it in my stash. And of course, I can keep the tags with anything. So, oh my, you know, because you're like, I'm knitting this with it. I don't need the tags. Yep, exactly. Cool. Um, my next project. Project. Uh, Got to get used to Tunisian crochet because you deal with this. That's the end. So I'm always like, what's on my leg? <laughs> End of the hook. Yeah. So I cast on this last 
brain. When did Tyler go to the dentist? La last week. And it's called right around, right around the corner, professional. Oh, so you can see it. And I had cast on something else with this yarn. It was just like, I don't have brains for that. And Leanne, a friend of mine from down east, suggested I cast this on. Get out the yarn. I do have the tag somewhere, and I know what it is. This is Boss Lady, and it was called September Door. And I, can you see hints of green? Kind of. Mm, kind of. Kind of. It's like a beigey with hints of green and brown. Um, and that's Boss Lady, but she doesn't uh, die anymore. And this is Hazel Knits. It's a little bit brighter than that. It does. It is picking up the the the, green, the yellows. I had two skeins of this, but I figured, oh, I'm going to do something with it. So those two are together. And this is my progress. And I'm professionally in the middle of a row. Of course. So it's not bad. It's basically garter stitch with increases. Yep. It's and garter stitch for miles. Yeah. And then you pick up for the borders. And I got my cute little progress keeper on here. I'm not even sure if you'll be able to see it. Oh, camera's over here. It's peas in a pod. That is so cute. I got, yeah, I had to, because Chevis had one and I needed one, because I need to be like Chevis. <laughs> and this is knit on, because let me look at show notes and not the needles, hello. 3.5, which is a US 4. Oh yeah. And it's, yeah, yeah that was what, 3.5? Yep, this is a 3.5 as well. And it's in a little window bag I made myself. Ooh, but those cats are llamas. Those are cats. cats. Cats are I, like me. I literally lined them up. So you've got this guy on the side, this guy on the side, all the heads. So there's maybe one in the making for somebody on screen right now. I'm trying to find pugs. They're not easy to find. I with that. I haven't found any recently. Nope. So if anyone knows where to find some pug fabric, let us know. I've looked. You can have it made with actually gadget space on it. No. You just want other people's pugs? I want almost, um, I'll have to pull it out. I have a bag made out of fabric that is, it looks like it's um, black with a mottled brown pattern on it. Oh. Almost camely, but it is actually pugs. It's pug faces. Nice. And I want to make another circle skirt. Oh. Because I happen to like them because they're flouncy and they're floofy and why not? Exactly. And I'm making noise. No. So is that that's what you have? Anything else? Well, I mean, I can keep pulling stuff out. Go for it. Um, She's like over here and over here and. Now it's more, where did I put the pattern? Because anyone who's watched either of us or seen either of us any amount knows um, <laughs> that I do insanity really, really well. Hashtag crazy. Yeah. Um, and Insanity has been the name of a lace project that I've been working on for 11 years now. Yes, well, way, you way before I met you in 2012. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and Insanity finally took its, it's in the naughty corner at the moment, but... Yeah, it jumped off the ledge. It did. It, it, it hasn't an unrecoverable error in it. And you noticed this and went, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I noticed this after I knit like a good six inches unstretched. On what on size it. needles? Um, two millimeter. So US zero. Yeah. Yeah. 
not impressed. So it's in timeout. And I'm working on this instead because Ugh. this is Insanity 2.0. Um, uh, it's The Princess Shawl by Sharon Miller. And I got lucky enough to snag a copy of the book um, years back now. And just to give you an idea, because this is a paid pattern, so I'm not going to actually show the... Uh, but that is, that's an eight and a half by 11 size sheet of paper. That's a seven, 11 and a half by 17. Yeah. How many that are there? Is <laughs> chart two, three. That's chart two of three of the center panel. Hashtag so, crazy. Yeah. So I've already done um, two charts of an, an edge stitch and there's another border that will go along it. And you knit this on? Two millimeter. No, actually these are 2.25s. But you knit these on our Zoom knit nights. Yes. <laughs> oh my Lord, look at that. That is one thing though that people loved when we did record before was the lace. Oh yeah. Well, you can do it in her sleep and I finally mastered charts and I'm talking simple charts. Just simple. to give you an idea. Cobweb, right? This is cobweb weight. The dark one is actual cotton sewing thread for comparison size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the gossamer? Yes. It's I think she's still doing yarn. She's the Gossamer Web on um, Etsy. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, literally spider web. Yep. Yep. She calls it frog hair. Frog hair. Oh, I like that. Um, the woman who does the yarn for these, this is actually undyed. Um, I know who made your bag. Nikaziki. Yep. This is one I picked up when I was out actually getting to meet her in person. And I got to sort through all of the bags that she was putting on sale at, at City a few years ago. And I know. It's nice to be friends. I, when I went last year, I was like, I need somewhere to put my luggage till I leave. And she's like, right over here. <laughs> yep. Yep. Katie. Yes. Sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off. I don't know where I was going with that anyway. Oh, um, she's one, the woman who makes the yarn. Um, shoot, I've just forgotten the name. Oh, well, it was something to do with frogs, but I've forgotten her name on Ravelry. Is one of the people who helped figure out the charting for the Queen Susan shawl. Which they did from pictures. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing with the, the Sharon yeah. Miller picture uh, shawl. It was done from pictures of an original Shetland shawl. So that's crazy. Oh yeah. I just, I love the fact that when it's done, just show the back again. Cause that's really nice. So I'm on, I'm just on the tips of these Shetlands <clears throat> here. I've kind of come up this way. The upside of this one is it is actually somewhat of a triangle and you start with the long edge, so it does get smaller. Oh. Before you then go and pick up all the way around and... Make it bigger again. Yeah. But, awesome. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That is... I was originally planning on having that done for August of this year for my baby brother's wedding, so I could wear it to it, but that didn't work. And there's no wedding. <laughs> and there's no wedding, because... We all know what's going on in the world. Yeah. Um, so now my goal is to have it done for next August for my baby brother's wedding. Uh, That's doable. <laughs> That's doable. It's a little crazy, but doable. Yeah. Wow. That, that's insane. Hence the name. Um, I have another whip. I've picked this back up. Look charts i showed them really quickly can't read anything i'm doing charts how long you've been trying to get me to do charts 
How long have I known you? 2012. So, about then. And I'm talking like super simple. And I use Knit Companion most of the time because, huh. So, this is the Amber Shore, and you can see very worn pattern. And this is by Inese Sang. And the reason I wanted to knit it in like those colors, I went to uh, the twist. Oh, middle of a row, middle of a row. <clears throat> I went to the twist retreat in November, and Jelaine um, is a yarn dyer, and she was knitting one out of her own yarn, and these are the colors. And do you see those? What are those, Liz? Those are nuts. No, no, they're baubles. Ooh. Full on baubles. I did baubles, okay? Uh huh. I mean, I'm crazy, but I'm not that crazy. Yeah, I won't do pico edging, but I did baubles. And if you follow Andrea Mowry's video, it's super easy. But I figured if I didn't do them, it wouldn't be the shawl. Yeah. Right? It wouldn't be so quite. The, the brown is Canyon Crescent, the blue, which is like a midnight blue, it's like darker. That's. It's almost as dark as my shirt. It's single ply, and that's called Midnight. And the speckle didn't have a name, and I still, I don't think it has a name yet. It's got like the blues and the browns. and So yeah, <clears throat> I'm on chart 2B. Yay! Yeah. So obviously the next is going to be some blue. But I think I have baubles after this next section that I just cast on, and I cast it on, well, sorry, cast on that section, and I did the wrong, I did the chart below for the one row there and back, and I was just like, yeah. Naughty pile. No, nope. no, that was before. Before, so where did I pick this up? When I picked this up this week, it was here. So I did all this, but I had, had ripped it back to get to the, it, yeah, it was not fun. So this is on, helps if I'm in the right spot of Miss show notes, 3.75 and four millimeters, which is a US five and six. And it's in stash, but I'm showing it now. Where is it? It's my new bag. Ooh. Oh, this is the one you made. No, this is the Tangled Stitch shop. Oh, okay. It's Kelly. I have um, just a few of her bags. Kind of like you have just a few skeins of Vente's yarn. Yeah. And I don't have like bags of bags that I've bought no bought bought in, mm, that's English that I bought over the years. Uh, her bags, I just I don't know. I can't get enough of them. They're awesome. I've got small, medium, and I've got a super large sweater bag. Notions pouches with the clear front, and she makes patchwork notion. I, when I went on the site for the update, I'm like, it's not there. She's like, no, it's there. It's not there. It's not there. It's, it's there. Okay, got it. <laughs> and as soon as it came in, my husband knew. Purple mailer. <laughs> so thank you, Kelly. I love it. Yeah. How many charts are on here? 3A and 3B and 3C. Oh, I got a few to go. Okay. You'll, As, be fine. Hmm? You'll be fine. I'll be fine. Right now I'm just using the tape, but I need to get my tablet back out because it's not the tape, that, that clear tape that we use. It's not. No, I need my oh. companion, which I just repaid for subscription, so I should use it. I can't really. Turn. I gave mine away. Oh, that's the tape. Yeah, but what that's you have under it, and then the knit picks chart holder. Yeah, that's not big enough as you no. can. You know what you need, and I have. Maybe I'll mail it. Maybe not. <coughs> Excuse me. It's like the size of a sheet of paper. It's metal. You can get them yeah. on it. Amazon. You can. Yeah, I'll send you the link. Good. Good. And I think there's some that have stands. That would be helpful. Yeah. So there, that is all of the whips, unless you've got anything else.
Not that I'm owning up to at the moment. I've actually, I've been pretty good as far as the progresses go. I've been finishing one and starting one, at least in the realm of the kind of medium knit. Yeah. You know, the stuff that you can do in front of the TV, that normal people can do in front of the TV, as opposed to... What you can do in front of the TV? Yeah. Because I'm doing training right now at work. And my brain is fried at the end of the day. I don't have the brain power for insanity right now. Well, that's why the, the, the changing staircase. Yes. I've heard it's an amazing shawl. I've just never done it. So oh, it I'm is. Probably going to be one of my next kind of variegated speckled shawls, I think. Because I, you know, got a few skeins of those. All right. So any sewing? Um that you brought out? You told me to stand up earlier and I'll stand up now. Okay. Pants? Pants. Nice. Which, I mean, it's the top of a pair of pants so you can't really tell anything. But they're a um, uh, 1940s pattern. So it's the, the bottom half of your standard 1940s Hollywood pants yeah. basically there's a lot of pictures of various Hollywood stars in them and they're are they wide at the bottom yeah yeah so they do um they're not bell bottoms but they do come down fairly wide and they're high-waisted yeah which I had to make them more high-waisted than they already were because you're tall because I'm tall and I'm long-waisted and I hate buying pants. Hate yeah, it. because they never fit right. Well, that's if they, you know, cover the necessities. Well, that's the thing. They'll reach your ankles, but they ain't covering. What oh, I'm, I'm lucky if they'll reach my ankles. Yeah. Better off to make it because you've been uh, making a lot of clothes. Yeah, no, I'd be making a lot of clothes. and. Why I start wearing skirts all the time because I don't have to worry about, you know, pants. skirts, pants. pockets. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah. These things. I never thought I would say that, say these words, but the pockets in these are just that little bit too big. I need to go in and fix them. Really got to reach for the phone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which isn't a problem in a skirt because I can grab the edge of the skirt and yeah. pull. Can't no. do that with pants. No. And um, pants are heavy. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that isn't actually a problem because the pants are loose enough that the phone just kind of moves oh, around a bit. Nice. It floats in space and it's fine. Oh, that's awesome. Finding a pair of keys in the bottom of the pants, though, takes some effort. Yeah. Put it this way, the pockets on my skirt, I can get my forearm up to here. In them. Oh, yeah. And that's not too big. No. No, no. <laughs> She's like, I need to be able to put everything in there. Oh, yeah. I walked a first. around a fair not last fall. Purse. <laughs> yeah. I walked around a fair last fall, no purse, and bottle of water. Like, I had, you know, one of my big bottles of what water. What you got in there, Liz? I got, it's like those women emptying their purses. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Like, there's a cell phone, there's keys. Got my tablet, got my knitting. Yeah. Well, I mean, this fits in my pocket and you can't see it. Mm, need to bring you to a store. No, just kidding. I need a wine bottle. Grab me that bottle of wine. No, honey. No, no. No, oh, no. <sighs> So I have stash. Do you have stash? I don't have stash. Well, the only stash I've got, I've been knitted. in a while. I knit it. <laughs> um, so I've got just a couple of things. I got my spring Arctic seasons box, which was sent to me in beginning of March. I got it in mid June. Sounds about right. Yeah. So Arctic crafts because. So these, oh, you can't see the colors. This is like a speckled blue. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to sit there next time because it's better lighting. But it's a speckled blue with darker blue and then the mini to match. Oh, hey, T. She sends me my favorite teas all the time. So this is on her Poldale sock, which I've never knit with. So that'll be interesting. So that's the spring edition. I'm currently waiting for the summer edition. You'll probably get it before Halloween. Maybe. And then I had ordered, <clears throat> it's called that yarn habit. She's new to me. And it's like a purpley beige background and that, that's as bright as that is. That's the midi that goes with it. Superwash merino nylon. She was doing a, um, what do you call that? Fundraiser. Um, I think one of her children was in the hospital and she was doing a fundraiser for another family and she was selling these. So how could I not? Well, exactly. And it's called Untamed Wildflowers with Lemon Lime. It's got pinks, chartreuse. It's really nice. Oh, purple. Not purple. And then I got this. <clears throat> so if you know um, Pippin Pin, Megan Nodecker, she has a podcast. Uh, she does mini skein sets. And I got these. Ooh. I sent in a skein of Arctic Crafts. Got to share that with the world, right? And I got back Ancient Arts Merino Silk and Champagne. There'll be pictures of this in the show notes because Plucky Knitter, I've never knit with Plucky Knitter. Primo fingering in Fantouche. That's the colorway. So it's more pinks and stuff. I think these are 10 grams. <clears throat> Autumn and Indigo, I've never knit with their yarn. And a one of a kind. It's like a gold almost. Mad Tosh, Tosh Sock, one of a kind, which I kind of don't really like, so it's going to go in somebody's package. And this is Star Fiber Studio Stellar Sock in Exmas 2017. Can you see it better there? Oh, it's a little better. Oh, but yeah, with the reds and the greens and whatnot. Why would it want to focus? Uh oh, hey. Focus. And then, yes, oh, sorry, I forgot something with my um, Arctic Crafts summer thingy. So it's like, it looks like crystal beads of sand in that. It's hard to see. I actually have some of these um, in my stitch marker collection with um, flowers in them. Oh, neat. I used to make stitch markers. And I've got a lot of leftovers, but yeah. So I like these here. These little ones on the end, they're just round. There's nothing mm -hmm. to them. They're just round. So it's kind of perfect. Then yesterday, I didn't have a great day. COVID. <sighs> and I was like, 9 o'clock at night, I need happy mail. I'm going to the mailbox, and there better be happy mail. There was mail. But I pulled the envelope out and looked at who it was from, and I'm like, I didn't order from them. I knew it was yarn jerky, as Leanne would call it. It was vacuum sealed yarn. I know I vacuum seal yarn. I should know. I know. And I'm like, I didn't order from them. <clears throat> Take it out, look at it, and I'm just like, and then it hits me. If you saw my Instagram post, you'll you'll know what I'm gonna say. Vente said she was sending me a surprise. So it didn't tell me from where, but it just that it wasn't from overseas. That's all I knew. Well, her favorite shop is Speaking Sanity in BC. And that's who it was from. Because I was literally like, I didn't buy this. I was on the site. Wait, did I actually buy it? No, I didn't click buy. Did I? Like, I was literally going, Sean, I didn't buy this. I swear. And he's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> this was supposed to be the stash down year. So this is what showed up. Is it backwards to you? What do you mean? The writing? I can't really tell because I can't really see it well. Oh, neat. Mineville wool. Anyway, it is a <clears throat> merino nylon two ply, 450 meters, which is almost 500 yards. Of course, this is my colors, right? Fall colors. Um, 
And did you know that the people who make this are fleece artists? Oh, hi. Gadget. He's like, oh, not this again. Yeah, Leanne told me that this is actually fleece artist who makes this. Oh, neat. Yeah, I didn't know that. But 450 meters. It's 492 yards. Oh, nice. Like, I want to strip, like, we're going over patterns. Like, it's like, I want to stripe it with a cream, which I have, but I need a pattern that only takes. Oh. So, thank you, Bente. So, I was quite happy with that. Yes, yes, I'll let you know. There you go. And the last thing that I got, which I'm already using, is I got a set of Prim interchangeables. Because mm. I bought a cheap set off Amazon to go, mm, I'm going to try this. And yeah, I liked it, but I was like, this, it's cheap wood. It doesn't slide. It, it, it's not great. So I got these. I went to wool time. Walked out with no yarn. Yeah, you better be impressed. <laughs> These cost not, they're not cheap, so I was quite happy to get them. And they're made by Knit Pro. They're prim, but they're made by Knit Pro, and they fit my Knit Picks and my um, Knitter's Pride cords. Yep, they're all made in the same factory by the same company. Yep, so it's kind of awesome. Yes, it is. Can I show one more whip that yeah. I thought about? Because if you follow me on Instagram, you know I got my sock machine back. I'm still trying to find a name for her. Isn't it pretty? It is. This is for Sean. He, although he says it's a little big, he's going to wear them anyways. Let's just put it that way. <clears throat> so... I have a stitch marker because that's the middle where I'm going to do the cutting. So I have my first successful sock. Yay! I had a semi-successful one before, but it wasn't that great. And I have enough left that I can probably just do the heels, toes, and I'm going to add the cuff because he wants it a certain length. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy about that. But I got to get cranking. <clears throat> Socks. Socks. These are, they're an FO, but they're also a work in progress. <laughs> there we go. Those, now, the toes were equal, up. right? They're both at the toe and that's the cuff. Yep. Were you hurry, hurry, what? Were you in a hurry? No, because the long one was the second one finished. Oh. So you just kept going. Yeah, I went because they're, um, these are the speckled space socks. Oh, those are pretty. Oh, yeah. Um, and this is yarn I picked up. I went, my parents winter in Florida, they're snowbirds. And I went down to visit them a couple of years ago and ran out of yarn. <laughs> I'm literally like halfway through the trip and I look at my father and I'm like, so there's a yarn store down the street and I'm like, <laughs> Just imagine. So they literally, they sat in the parking lot for like 45 minutes while I was in this yarn store because it, it was in a strip mall along like a highway full of beach shops that were closed because it was February. That's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, so this was, I started these in Florida two years ago, three years ago, a while ago anyway, and I finally finished them. But yeah. Hmm. This is the correct size. That is the height that actually fits my leg. So are you taking the other one down? Yeah, this one's got to come down. Um, I had debated. Easier to take out than put on. Mm -hmm. True. I have enough to put extra on, but I tried them on, and this one actually no longer fits at the top. Yeah. Um, because this ends at the bottom of my calf. Yeah. I made, I used a full two balls of Felici and made Sean full. Like I used both balls and it's just too long because he's a cyclist and was a swimmer. He's got really big calves and he's like, it just kind of, kind of goes up and then it kind of just goes. So the ribbing doesn't help. I have to put oh. elastic in it. 
So. Yeah, these ones, um, I'd actually have to make them wider at the top. Yeah. In order for it to be yeah. comfortable on my leg. No. Like, there is nothing that's going to make it fit properly. So, well, you throw down, down a few rows of ribbing. Yep. I mean, it's annoying because you can see these are lined up right now. And that's the back one. I need to pull it back to, to there. about there. Oh. I'm annoyed, but which is why they haven't gotten done, but they've been because you've got better things to do. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it was 40 degrees Celsius outside today. I ain't wearing wool socks. No, no. I was so happy in March when I finished the first sweater, and then I finished this one while we we're in lockdown, and it's just like I can't wear them here. I could wear them upstairs, but as soon as I, because our air conditioning unit is at the top of the steps. We have no air ducts in our house. Who builds a house without air ducts? I thought your house was built post-World War II, not Exactly. Great. My old house that was built in the 70s had air ducts. This one has none. So we had this honking unit at the top of the stairs. It's a commercial Samsung air conditioner. It doesn't cool the main floor. So we've had to have fans blowing down the stairs and then fans blowing to the live, like to the fan, like the, this whole fan circulation thing. But it's freezing up here. But this room I'm in, I'm like literally 10 feet from the hallway, is warm. It's the hottest room in the house. Yep. So it's really just cold and I'm. I'm in my pajama shorts and a t-shirt and then it goes to pants and socks and sweater and then Sean will come up and go. <laughs> and he's two floors down in the basement where it's quite cozy. Yep. Yeah, I'm in, well, one of two rooms in my house. I live in a very small house. Um, but I have central air and this is the hottest room in my house, probably because of the massive window. Yep. But the heat. Yeah. Yeah. So I got pictures with it and that's that. That's it. That's why I took off the vest. I don't think me taking off a full t-shirt would be okay on camera. No, probably not. No. I don't think it would pass YouTube censors. No. And we'd have to censor it and then nobody would watch or maybe they would. No. <laughs> so I think that's it. We've talked about pretty much everything. Anything else? No, there'll be more next time. Yeah. We're going to post this in our group in Ravelry, which I've created. Um, we don't have a YouTube channel yet, so we'll have to discuss how we want to post it on YouTube. Yep. But, yeah, I got show notes. I got an awesome program that hubby bought me for podcasting because he's like, trials? You don't need a trial, so... I'll do some editing, and I think I can send you the video via Google, right? Probably. Okay, and then you can have a look at it. and We'll figure it out. Yeah. So hopefully this recorded. It says recording the whole time. Because, you know, mm -hmm. professionals. Yep. That's it? That's it. Okay, I'll stop the video, and then we'll keep chatting. Happy well, knitting, everyone. Hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Happy crafting. Bye.